Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's Feldenkrais lesson is one of my absolute favourites. It was originally called Classical Twist on the Side of an Advanced Opening and I taught it in Rutland recently through my online classes as part of the breathing series. So please begin by lying down on your mat and take a moment just to notice the overall contact that you make into the floor and bring your attention to your back and your ribs in particular and just sense if you can how the ribs touch the floor where they touch the floor and whether you sense a difference between maybe how the right side of the chest is resting into the floor compared to the left. As ever with me, my lower ribs are a little bit lifted away towards the ceiling, so I'll be interested to see how that changes during the course of the, of the lesson. Please just roll your head very, very lazily from one side to the other always giving yourself permission to stay within a very easy range of motion so you're not looking to move into pain and compare how it feels to roll the head to the right compared to the left and then come to centre please bring your legs to standing both your legs and imagine once more that you are lying on a clock. This famous Feldenkrais clock and it's painted on the back of your pants. As many of you know by now, 12 o'clock on the clock is towards the head, 6 o'clock is towards the feet. Once you've thought about that, could you begin just to roll your pelvis a little bit to 12 o'clock towards the head? and then towards six o'clock towards the feet. So to help you roll to 12 o'clock towards the head, you can press down into both feet evenly and that will bring the lower back closer to the floor and then you think of the feet becoming light to help you go to six o'clock. So using both feet to press into to help roll the pelvis to 12, think of the feet becoming light to go to 6 o'clock and you'll notice how the lower back first flattens and then arches and then you can also combine with this method, method the idea of pulling in a spot two inches below the navel to help you go to 12 o'clock and then pushing out that spot to go to six o'clock. So just exploring the two directions using maybe both the legs and the tummy muscles to help you do that. Once you've done that a few times, please leave it alone and come to lie on your right hand side. So I need to flip round to the other side just so that you can see that. And it's a good idea, if you're lying on the side, to have a little bit of support in the form of a pillow or a towel, folded towel or a blanket, just to give you support underneath the head. The idea here is that there should be no strain in the neck muscles. And even though I can get my head down without any support fairly comfortably, I can still feel there's a little bit of a, a pull going on in my neck muscles. So I'm going to take a, a pillow just to take some of that stretch out, out of things. Now have your underneath arm, your right arm, in front of you and have your left arm just resting on the side. Both knees are bent up, one on top of the other, one, one foot on top of the other. Now just check the position of the knees See, if, if, if I angle my knees further down, it will tend to cause me to arch the lower back a little bit excessively. So I'm just going to bring the knees up a little bit, as if I'm sitting but lying down on my side. And then your left arm, you have a, 
couple of options. One is to have the arm just long on your side, that's absolutely fine. I prefer to have the elbow bent with the hand just draped into my, in front of my tummy. But as you position the arm, if you're bending the elbow, just notice, is your elbow in line with your shoulder or do you maybe place it behind the shoulder? You see, if you place it behind the shoulder, it will, it will tend to push the shoulder forward. Whereas if you have the elbow more or less in line with the shoulder, or even slightly in front of it, it won't have that effect on the shoulder. It will help to free up the shoulder. And then once you've found your position, begin to take your left shoulder back in space and then come back onto the side. So you're just thinking, can you take your left shoulder back in space and then come back into the starting position? So the left shoulder is just going back in space and then coming back. And it's not just going back in space, you'll realise it's going back in space and towards the floor. It's rotating, in other words, towards the floor behind you. And I can feel how my knee, my left knee, is just sliding back a little bit to help accommodate taking the shoulder back. So you might just want to notice, is, are you keeping your knee absolutely held still? Held still as you take the shoulder back, which would be one way of doing it. Uh, but if possible, as you take the shoulder back, think of just pulling in your tummy slightly to that 12 o'clock position to see if that helps to take the shoulder back. Quite often, if you don't make that little adjustment in the tummy, what happens is the lower back will stay locked into that 6 o'clock position and it won't take it will mean that the, taking the shoulder back won't be so easy. So just think of the tummy also just being pulled back slightly as you take that left shoulder back in space. And then allow, as you take the shoulder back, the head and eyes to turn to look towards the ceiling. And then you come back with the head and eyes and the shoulder. So you think the shoulder goes back, you can turn the head and eyes, as a single movement and then you come back and you'll feel that as you allow the head and eyes to turn as you take the shoulder back then you'll feel more of the chest turning towards the ceiling too the breastbone also turns towards the ceiling now as you're just doing a few more of these movements checking the breath is easy the jaw is nice and relaxed just notice as you turn the head, does your chin tend to move away from the breastbone as you turn the head? Which would tend to suggest your shortening in the back of the neck. And if that is the case, instead, could you maybe think of just keeping the chin drawn in slightly as you take the shoulder back? Such a nice lazy movement. This is as if you're lying in bed and you just want to, to, to go onto your back from the side. Now pause the next time you're on the side and then this time as you take the left shoulder back just as you were doing, don't turn the head and eyes. Stay looking with your nose and eyes at your right hand. So as you take the shoulder back, you slide the head back on your support and then you come back onto the side. So as you take the shoulder back, you don't turn the head or eyes, you stay looking with the eyes and the nose and the mouth and the chin at your right hand and then you come back onto the side. So again, just a few more. As you take the shoulder back, allowing the chest to turn, you slide the head back in space and then you come back onto the side. 
again, it's tempting to think of this as two movements of the shoulder and the head doing two separate things. See if you can maybe think of the area of the spine from the base of your skull to the area between the shoulder blades. If you think about the line of your spine, what happens to take the shoulder and the head back is that part of the spine literally, quite literally, moves back in space. It moves back and rotates a little bit towards the floor as you take the shoulder back and the head back. You'll need to do this slowly to begin with because it's very easy to forget that you're trying to keep the nose and the eyes looking at the hand and just turn the head. So um, slow it down if necessary so you can um, find this movement and you'll discover it involves a slightly different organisation of the neck to do it. Now pause on the side once more and then combine the movement of the, the two movements of the head so that as you take the shoulder back, thinking of the tummy coming back, you slide and turn the head to look towards the ceiling and then you come back onto the side. So as you take the shoulder back, you slide and turn the head to look towards the ceiling as you take the shoulder back. And already I can feel, maybe you can too, that I'm going into a much deeper ch twist in the middle part, upper part of my spine. I can feel how my, my chest is turning to look towards the ceiling and then you come back onto the side. Now, pause, and then the next time you do that, the next time you take the left shoulder back, sliding and turning the head, pause there, and see, could you bring your right hand onto your forehead, so the fingers are facing to the left, and the, allow the hand to be heavy on the head. Don't, it's not just the fingertips, it's the palm of the hand is resting on the head and my fingers are facing to the left. And then use your hand, your arm, to roll your head a little bit to the left and to the right. Just checking the jaw is nice and relaxed. And you, if your eyes are cl closed, open the eyes and look with the eyes as you're turning the head. So you look with the eyes to the left as you're turning the head to the left. Look to the right as you're turning the head to the right. Because when you allow the eyes to be part of the movement, it will really help you to organise the chest and the spine for this the movement. Good. Now... As you just do a few more of these movements, as you roll the head to the left, exhale and then come back. So that as you roll to the left, you're exhaling and maybe just do a few of these movements a little bit more quickly. Exhaling, you don't have to make a noise like me, just exhaling as you're rolling the head to the left and back to centre. And then Pause, rest the right arm if possible, turn the palm down, have the arm down by your side. Then bring the left hand onto the forehead. So my left fingers are pointing to the right. Again, allow the weight of the hand to be experienced on the head. And then use the weight of the hand to help roll the head a little bit to the right and to the left. So do it nice and slowly, and again, allow the eyes to be part of this. And then once you've done a few of those, see if you can bring both hands, one on top of the other, onto the forehead, and use both hands to roll the head a little bit from side to side. Good. And then pause, just rest the arms, and then come and lie on your back for a second and take a rest.
and notice how that feels when you do come to rest, just how, if you notice how the two sides feel, the right shoulder compared to the left, and then just roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other, just to see how that goes. It's definitely a little bit easier for me to the right than it had been before. And then bend the knees and come to lie on your left hand side. This is, by the way, a very symmetrical lesson, uh, doing one side and the other. It's very, um, very typically Feldenkrais, very methodical approach to breaking down the movements. So check that your two knees are on top of each other, the two feet. Your left arm, if you're on the left side, is stretched out in front of you. Your right arm is just resting on the side. And checking if you have the arm bent on the side, that the elbow, you just think about the position of the elbow, it, that it's not too far behind you. It's more or less in line with the shoulder, if not slightly in front. And then begin to explore, as we did on the other side, of taking this time the right shoulder back in space and then coming back. And you can allow the head and eyes to turn immediately to look towards the ceiling and then come back. So as the shoulder goes back, you know, I'm just thinking of keeping the tummy drawn in slightly. My top knee will slide relative to the bottom one as I take the shoulder back and allow the head and eyes to turn. A nice easy breathing, jaw nice and relaxed. And then pause once you've done a few of those movements. And now this time, as you take the shoulder back, allowing the chest to turn, don't turn the head. Stay looking at your left hand, but let the head slide back on your mat and then come back onto the side. Again, as you take the shoulder back, you slide the head back. Stay looking at your left hand, your left fingers, as if you're just pouring the weight towards the back, but keeping the head and eyes looking towards your left hand and then come back. Such a nice way of reorganising the neck and shoulders. Now pause on the side and then this time as you take the shoulder back, slide and turn the head at the same time. You'll feel as you do that it really, you can perhaps sense how it's creating this twist in the upper body so if I'm the upper body is coming on to the back but not the lower back, not the lower part of the body, and then you come back. Just checking that you're not letting the chin move away from the breastbone as you do that, thus shortening the neck, just looking to keep length in the back of the neck as you explore this. Now the next time you are turned towards the ceiling, pause there and bring your left hand onto your forehead and use the hand, the weight of the hand, to roll the head a little bit to the right and to the left. Nice, easy breathing. Draw nice and relaxed, using the eyes to help, so you're exploring your room with your vision and then pause rest the left arm down by your side if you can bring the right palm onto the forehead fingers facing to the left and use the weight of the arm to roll the head one side and the other And once you've done a few, maybe just doing that as you're breathing out, as you're looking to the right a few times, then pause and bring both hands to rest on top of each other on the forehead. And then use both arms to roll the head a little bit from side to side. Each time I go to the right, I can feel 
it teasing out a little bit more rotation in the spine and the chest. Good. Pause, rest the arms, and then please come to lie on your back again for a second. And notice whether things maybe have evened up between the two sides. Already I can feel those ribs settling down into the floor a little bit more. And then please bend the knees and come to lie on your right hand side again. I told you it was a symmetrical lesson. Sometimes the hardest thing about these Heldon Price lessons is actually the moving from the side to the other side to the front and to the back because you get so chilled doing them. Um, have, support the head again if necessary. Have the right arm stretched out in front of you to begin with the left arm resting on the side. And with the other pillow. And then begin again, once you've settled on the side, to once more take your top shoulder back in space, sliding and turning the head to look towards the ceiling. Just do, you can do this as many times as you like. It's very, very nice feeling, thinking about the tummy also coming back as you do that. And then pause with your upper body, your chest more or less turned to look towards the ceiling, your face is looking towards the ceiling, and then see, could you interlace your hands and bring the hands behind the back of the head? And then, without turning this too much into an exercise, could you take a breath in and as you breathe out, lift the head as if you wanted to look towards your side pocket and then let the head come back down again. So again, is you always a good idea to do this on an out breath. And if you allow it to be on an out breath, you'll notice how the ribs can move together to help with the lifting of the head. You see, if I just show you and keep my chest super stiff and try and lift my head, nothing's happening. It's not, it, all it is, I'm straining the neck muscles. Whereas if I use the out breath, it's really my head is just a passenger in the hands and it's my centre, my core, that's helping to lift the head. And I could feel the ribs on my left hand side coming closer together and some of the ribs underneath therefore pressing down into the floor. Just going to do a few more. Nice easy breathing. Check again what the eyes are doing as you're lifting the head. See, if, if you keep the eyes looking at the ceiling as you try and do it, it will probably contribute to shortening through the back of the neck. So just see how you can use the eyes to help. And then once you've done a few, just leave it alone, come back onto the side, and then we'll do the other, the other side. So come to lie on your left hand side once you're in position take the right shoulder back so you turn the chest turn the head towards the ceiling interlace stay there interlace the hands behind the back of the head maybe changing the interlace to your less familiar interlace and again without turning this into an exercise, but treating it more as an e exploration, could you take a breath in, and as you exhale, lift the head and shoulders to see the side pocket, and then release it back down. Again, you take a breath in, as you breathe out, see if you can feel how the ribs slide down on the right hand side to help with the lifting of the head. The more you can let the chest fold, it will make the head lifting light. And each time you lower, in just keeping the jaw nice and relaxed, the eyes nice and soft. And I can feel some of those lower ribs on my left hand side 
pressing down a little bit more clearly into the floor. I'm just going to do one more tick. Good. And then leave it alone and take a rest on the back. suddenly a little bit longer there as my these lower middle ribs have just released a little bit down into the, into the mat. Now as you're just resting here on the on the mat just roll the head again a little bit from side to side just to see how that maybe has been affected by the movement. And then come to centre, bend the knees, and once more come to lie on your right hand side. Have the left arm on left arm on your side and begin again by taking the shoulder back, turning the chest allowing the head and eyes to turn to look towards the ceiling and stay there and then see if you can turn your right palm down towards the floor to have that arm a little bit down by your side and then some of you will be able to rest the left arm down by your side too and begin to do a movement of bringing your right shoulder forward, forward towards the ceiling, and then you let it come back down. So just bringing the right shoulder forward and then letting it come back down. Now, it isn't, this isn't a big movement at all, of bringing the shoulder forward. I'm not lifting the elbow, I'm just bringing the shoulder forward and then letting it back down. And it's really interesting, so as I bring the shoulder forward, I can feel the, it just bringing a little bit more weight or a little bit more movement into the part of the spine opposite my breastbone. In other words, the area of the spine between the shoulder blades. And now the next time you bring the right shoulder forward, look with the head and eyes towards the right shoulder and then as the shoulder releases you let the head come back to centre. Shoulder forward, turning the head and eyes to look to the right and then you come back to centre and a few more like that. Again, just nothing strained, just looking to the right as if you're looking over the shoulder as it comes forward and then you let it come back down. And then once you've done a few of those, just bring the right hand back onto the forehead and explore what's it like to roll the head a little bit from left to right again. Is it any easier to do? And then pause with the right arm down by your side and then see, could you think of lifting both shoulders forward and then let them go back to the floor. So both shoulders come forward and you release them back to the floor. And hopefully you'll be able to see in the video that what happens as the shoulders come forward for me is my ribs, the, these, these middle to lower ribs, they fold together, my breastbone sinks down uh, to help the chest softens to help bring both shoulders forward so that the, the shape of the spine changes as the shoulders come forward. Now pause, just rest as you are for a second and then try lifting the head and the shoulders and then coming back down. So again, as the shoulders lift, the head lifts I let it come back down 
Again, head and shoulders lifting and then come back down. And then pause, try a few just with the shoulders coming forward again. Can you feel, can you allow the ribs to soften as part of that movement? And then pause and then alternate one shoulder coming forward as the other goes back to the floor and vice versa. So one shoulder goes back as the other comes forward. Just trying to make this a single movement rather than say I've got to move the left shoulder and then the right. Trying to have one shoulder comes forward as the other goes back. And it creates this really interesting movement in the spine. Now leave it alone and take a rest on the back. such a nice lesson to do if you um, do any kind of racket sports or you're a golfer, that ability to create movement and rotation through the thoracic part of the spine. And that rotation often gets a bit, that possibility of rotation often gets compromised in many people from a, a rather slumped position. Please, once you've taken a rest, come to lie on your other other side. So I'm on my left side in the starting position with the arm right arm on my side. You can begin by taking the right shoulder back, allowing the chest to turn and the head to slide and turn and then once there see if you can turn the left palm down have that arm down by your side and the right arm down by your side too and just explore what's it like to bring your left shoulder forward and back so again it's a small movement of the left shoulder coming forward and I can feel that uh, it causes a little bit of rotation to happen in the chest as the shoulder comes forward and then see if you can turn the head to head and eyes to look towards the shoulder as it comes forward and then you let the head come back to center as it releases so shoulder forward looking to the left come back shoulder forward looking to the left and then coming back and then pause bring your left hand onto your forehead once more and just see what it what is it like now to roll the head a little bit from side to side definitely going a little bit further now pause bring the left arm down by your side, the right arm too, and see what is it like to maybe bring those shoulders forward, keeping the head down and release. So both shoulders come forward, you can feel the ribs coming together to facilitate that and back down. Both shoulders forward and release. Forward and release. Once you've done a few of those, try the combination of shoulders and head lifting and back down. So shoulders and head lifting and back down. In shoulders and head lifting and back down. And then alternate one shoulder coming forward as the other goes back towards the floor. So again, try to make this a single movement of the shoulders, one coming forward as the other goes back. And you hopefully begin to feel oh, how it just creates a little bit of change in that thoracic part of the spine, the part of the spine between the shoulder blades. Good. And then please, once you've done a few of those, just leave it alone and take a rest the rest on the, on the back. It 
it's a lovely sunny day here in Rutland uh, but we're still in lockdown of course like so many other other people please just roll the head a little bit from one side to the other and come to center and then bend the knees and come to lie on your right hand side again So, once you're on the side, with the left arm resting on the side, just as we've been doing now, and hopefully this is a bit easier, take the shoulder back, turn the head and eyes to look towards the ceiling, and stay there. And then this time, could you have both arms down by your side? Now, I'm finding as I've gone further with the turning in the chest that the height of my pillow is actually not just annoying me, but getting getting in the way. So if you can have, I'm going to adjust that, have both arms down by your side, and then begin to explore sliding one shoulder up to the ear as the other slides away, and vice versa. So I, you can also think of it as lengthening one arm down and away as the other comes up, just lengthening the arms one arm down as the other comes up, or thinking of this more happening, one shoulder sliding up to the as the other slides away, and you'll notice I'm, I'm keeping my head more or less in the centre at the moment, looking at the ceiling. And as you explore this movement, you'll feel some very interesting response in the ribs. So, as, for example, my left shoulder slides down. I can feel these ribs on the left-hand side coming close together and, correspondingly, the ribs on the right-hand side opening. Where the two sides meet in the spine, creating some very interesting movement and shapes in the spine and then pause and then see could you slide both shoulders away from the ears and both shoulders up to the ears so I slide both arms down and away both shoulders up to the ears and as they slide away again you feel if you allow the ribs to soften that change it creates in the in the chest, in the rib cage. Good. And once you've done a few with both movements, a few movements with both arms, then alternating one shoulder sliding up, the other away. And then you can begin to allow the head to slide on the mat in response to the sliding of the arms. And then please pause and come to rest on the back for a second. That's a strong variation for the ribs. And then please come to lie on your other side. So I'm resting on the left side, my knees are bent up, the left arm is in front of me to begin with, the right arm is on my side, and begin by taking the right shoulder uh, back in space, you slide and turn the head, again adjusting your support as necessary, and then see if you can have both arms down by your side, comfortably by your side, with the palms turned down. And once you're there, then begin to explore one shoulder sliding away from the ear, the other towards the ear. Trying to think of this being a single movement that you're creating. And you'll feel, as you get used to it, if you allow it to, this, this movement in the ribs the one set of ribs closing as the other opens 
and Hal creates a very interesting movement in the back. Now pause and then begin to slide both arms down and away from you and then both arms up to the ears or both shoulders up to the ears, both arms away. Feel how the ribs come together to help. Both shoulders up to, to the ears, down and up to the ears. And once you've done that a few times, then alternate again, one shoulder sliding away, the other towards the ear. You can feel what it does to the spine, and then begin to allow the head, if it wants to, to slide a little bit on the mat in response to the movement of the arm. But not turning the head, not turning the nose, it's the same point on the back of the head that's sliding on the floor. And then please leave it alone and take a rest. Again, as you come to rest on the back, bring your attention to your breath, so as we've been doing in previous work, weeks, lessons, just beginning to notice your inhalations and your exhalations. And see if you can allow, in particular, your inhalations to create this sense of length as you breathe in length in the sense of down towards the pelvis and all the way up to the corners of the shoulders all the way up to the ears in both sides of the trunk and also a sense of depth with the breath with the breath in so allowing it to create space, so the breath is reaching or pressing the ribs down into the floor behind you and opening the chest towards the ceiling. And then also a sense of depth to the sides and to the midline so that you're using the breath, particularly your inhalation, to create this sense of space, movement and depth. And then very lazily roll the head a little bit from right to left, just to see how that goes. Once you've rolled the head, you just notice the contact into the floor. Bring your legs for standing, roll to the side and eventually come up to sit and then to stand. When you do come to stand, just take a moment to notice the effect of the lesson in standing and maybe you'll feel a similar, this lengthening effect of the ribs uh, in your standing and walking too. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I went through the variations fairly quickly for the purposes of the video. You're always free to slow it right down, to pause the recording, if you're doing it at home. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much.